we asked Adam to come up with an idea um, for a podcast and he said, how many times a day can you wank it before your dick falls off? No, he said, what's the worst ways to die? The worst way to go, I think, is a... a Listening to garlic bread by beer mixed <laughs> food on repeat till you die. That was also on my list. Trapping the victim between two boats, feeding and covering them with milk and honey, and they'd be devoured by insects and vermin. The way to go though, death by blozer. Uh, we go, we're obviously running out of time. <laughs> you, how, how bad do you feel for Danielle? Sometimes I just think, what is she fucking putting up with, man? <laughs> but this is really depressing me today. So we're just talking about people dying in really bad circumstances. I, we, I, 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 idea. My idea, but I, really, I didn't really think it through, man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Lindsay got it into her head last night that we were going to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy start to finish again. They are great films, to be fair. Never I, seen I, them. I was, what? I'm just trying to it, mate. Talking be turned in his grave, mate. All right, cool. Who would be? The guy that wrote the <laughs> I'm Adam and I'm Josh. Yeah, it's the Breaking Bread podcast. We're back. We'll be here till the uh, the lights go out for like a payment on the bill. But until then, you've got us. Thanks for joining us again. How's it going, mate? You seem chipper this week. If you, some of you might have noticed that you, you looked a bit miserable last week. Looked and sounded a bit miserable, uh, but he's all right this week, you know. <laughs> Can we just for cl- just for clarification? We recorded a podcast approximately three hours before I went to a funeral. Probably wasn't the best uh, idea on my part. It wasn't my I think, idea. I think we powered for it. I persevered. We got there in the end, didn't we? That wasn't why you were miserable, though. It was fucking was. Ad- ad- admit it. Now you came in, you were like, oh, man, the gym was closed this morning. I couldn't do my CrossFit workout. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't make fun, but... Uh, yeah, how's, how's, you're doing all right this week, yeah? Mate, let's celebrate. If I had a marker pen, I would uh, I would change that, but we can't afford a Sharpie. The, the one that we used last time is dried right out. <laughs> Three million subscribers, mate. Yeah. I keep saying I'm going to bring that confetti, don't I? <laughs> CGI some confetti in George. I've done the confetti in video. <laughs> it's doable. Yeah, thanks to everyone for, uh, obviously not on this channel, <laughs> but you know, on my, my real channel. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much channel. for... Uh, for subscribing so it's a humongous mass in fact i only noticed really when uh by the point i'd noticed it was something like three three point zero to three million and two thousand or something like that uh so rapid was the growth of the channel for some reason this month so thank you very much it really does mean a lot to me yeah that's class i mean uh the uh we can only put it down to the fact that the cake video that we did in london that's substantial that's, that's, yeah. that's what i'm gonna say that <laughs> you, well, you're, you're joking but i think that's that's a contributing fact because i think a lot of people watch that and um, made the erroneous assumption that perhaps the production would be that great on every video, <laughs> when in fact it's not, right? A lot of the time it's just me with a camera in my hand. But that one, we, we, I didn't think it would do that well, and it, it turned out to do really well. A lot of people hated it, but more people enjoyed it, and I think that uh, certainly was part of the bump this month. Here. It's weird how the uh, algorithm will put certain videos out to a wider audience, and that we're just one of them that just went there. and you got- I'm not really, yeah, but nobody, if I, I, I'm not one of those people that kind of, hangs on the algorithm and you just make good content and if make it's good good shit if it's good and you're consistently is trying to do better stuff it, it, hopefully you will you know people will like it and come back and that's uh don't don't spend time worrying about the algorithm that's what everyone else does. well congratulations let's start this uh this show like we start every other show for the last 85 ep- how many episodes have you done george i think this will be 80-ish 81 82 maybe we have to do something special for the 100th yeah we we're, we're going to belgium that might come up around christmas time though do the it's got to, yeah, actually. It would, wouldn't it? Like, I don't know how many we do between now and then. Maybe. Yeah, I'll we'll have to work it out. Anyway, let's start with the YouTube comments. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Mate, the comments are just getting so good on the channel. <coughs> aren't they? Like, they're getting funny. I think people like are getting bad, so you laugh at like, them. Or? No, like, they're, they're just, there's a lot of good ones that's dropping oh, right. in there. A lot of people are getting involved. Um, I prefer the bad ones. I like it when George drops the bad ones, but go on, like, whatever, whatever you've chosen this week, George, <laughs> hit us with it. So we've got AQ Corner saying, genuine compliments to the guys for the lack of filler words in the podcast. It's a bugbear of mine as I listen to a lot of podcasts in work. A lot of f- f- filler words? Maybe some people on podcasts just try and fill too much time. I, th- I, read, that, I read that more as uh, the lack of filter. Like, you know, like we're not... Oh, like, well, he says filler. He says mm. filler words, didn't he? Did it say yeah, filler fi- words? Filler words. I think does he mean because we don't say. I mean, I, I say like more than I would like, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I, I that's a bugbear in mind when people say like, uh, like. Uh, maybe it means we don't do that, but I think we do kind of do that. AQ Corner, anyway, can maybe. you please clarify in this episode <laughs> what you mean by that? <laughs> Could be either. Uh, we've got uh, Rogue and Josh. That's a good name. Rogue and Josh. Uh, how you say? <laughs> that was the rockiest initial 10 minutes of intro I've ever experienced. What a ride. This is from the last episode on Nathan's. I thought well, it was good. The best part of that whole episode was the, before we got in it talking about 
people eating fucking hot dogs. Why? What did we talk about? We were just talking about shit, weren't we? For yeah, for it's entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> and James Blester said on that comment, another absolute cracker from Josh. Uh, you're one of the chief freaks coming on with your beard, strolling on like a hobbit. You sir, have a way with words. Love it. Why, why, why just Josh? Why is Josh name dropped there and I'm not? <laughs> <laughs> Look at him now. He's getting all precious with his 3 million subscribers. I'm worried. You're the star of the show, baby. You're the star of the show. Uh, we've got Jeff Esper saying, I think you'd have a better chance to place higher at Sloppers. Oh, cheers, Jeff. Is. That's in Colorado. That's too soon, I think. I think it's this month. I always want to do that because it's like a, Sloppers are like an open-faced, uh, like a gooey burger. So imagine a burger, right? You a Sloppy up- Joe? No, a bit like that though. It's oh. like a, apparently it's like a Colorado. Uh, have, you, have you seen what a sloppy Joe is? It's basically like a chili in a bread bun. Mm. Yeah, no, a sloppy is like appealing to me. Sloppy is like a burger, and they top it with green chili, and then it, but it's open faced. But it's like, I imagine that contest would be fucking carnage. Oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't think I can make that one, Jeff. But thanks for uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully, nothing that I said offended you. What an off <laughs> honor though, the second uh, second place eater, right? So yes. it's like arguably the best eater in the world for yeah. me because like he only really loses to Joey at hot dogs <laughs> he'll beat him at almost everything else so but yeah I uh, love Jeff so it's nice that when he when, when he listens ah thanks Jeff I want to do a video with him but I don't want to I asked him I think I asked him twice but at both times I asked him um in true unprofessional fashion was the day before we were both doing a contest I was like hey Josh do you want to f- uh, uh, Jeff do you want a fun video today and he's like nah babe there's a contest <laughs> tomorrow because he takes it seriously it, you know, it, I think that Jeff, if you want, if you want, just like, so he knows in case it, I'd love to do a video with you, mate, but I don't want to keep asking you in case you just don't want to do it. <laughs> so like, if you don't want to do it, just remain silent. And then... <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? That'd be like a cool progression for your channel though, wouldn't it? If you, um, if you went out to like America to, to eat with the other eaters, you know, from like Nathan's, that'd be a cool, like little mini series. Yeah. But only ones I like. <laughs> All right. <okay. laughs> what a savage. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Any more? I got one more comment from Sean Thorpe saying, funny as fuck already. My daughter used to do bigger shits than me and we couldn't flush. She was only six, <laughs> lol. Many more, but have to continue with your podcast now. <laughs> oh, thanks, but I thought he was exaggerating with the poo size, but oh, mate, clearly it's, it's bonkers. Uh, like, I don't even know how it's possible. I just don't know how it's possible. Well, many, obviously many parents will relate to that. Ah, it's a nice little way to start. And nice comments yeah. there. Thanks, everybody. It some, were some positive bias there for change instead of the other way. Uh, another week has passed, and another video has dropped into the group chat of Adam watching videos with <laughs> men with their cocks out. It's pure coincidence that. I've and he says with. that I'm the one that's obsessed with cocks. It's I haven't said curdled semen for at least I, seven I, days. I didn't want. I didn't want it to. to I watched this film <laughs> called. Uh, I wish this on uh, Lindsay got to bed and I normally we pay for Shudder, you know, that like kind of add on from for that you get with Amazon uh, Prime. You can Shudder. Pay for. Shudder. Shudder, yeah. It's this, they do specifically like sh- basically shit horror movies. Right. Um, but, you know, it's kind of one of those things you can just throw on. And uh, Lindsay got to bed and I watched this one called Yummy, which was supposed to be like a cor- uh, horror comedy. Um, and it was about like this couple, they go to get plastic surgery in some uh, in, um, <laughs> somewhere in Europe, it doesn't really tell you where. Uh, but it's it turns into a bit of a slasher. But in that film, a dude has had <laughs> a guy has had like a penis enlargement, oh, and yeah. they think they're gonna die. So this kind of this woman says to them, "We should make the most of you know the the lights." So they're about to get it on, and uh, he says, "Go gentle with me because I've just had." He takes the bandages off his knob. He's just had the uh, penis enlargement surgery, and then the, the I think the lights go off. And so in order to uh, provide light she strikes a match or something and then accidentally don't know how his penis catches fire <laughs> so that was that was the video can, that can i you sent to you the video? <laughs> no, probably, probably not um but yeah complete coincidence that in the space of two weeks i've seen two videos with uh explicit cock on screen <laughs> josh is there a penis enlargement surgery a thing yeah google it how does it find out how they do that <laughs> What do they do? Like get somebody else's and like you, you, you buy like, the bluff. No, like, listen, right? How, how, how listen, do, do, do they chop it in half, get somebody else's, and like put the middle bit in and then stitch it back together? I think I watched a documentary. Like different shades. It looks like they're lollies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think I watched a documentary like years ago. I'm talking like 10, 15 years ago, and I think it takes skin from like your arm or something. I don't know how it works. Got to be like some kind of graft, hasn't it? Like Should it. we just kind of get off that? I don't no, really come want, on. This is like deep this is the <laughs> scientific. Go deep. Would, uh, the most widely used sur- surgical procedure to lengthen the penis involves cutting the suspensory ligament that attaches the penis to the pubic bone. Also, skin is moved from the abdomen to the penis shaft, 
when this ligament is cut, the penis appears longer because more of it hangs down. Fascinating. Why, why on earth? Mm. Why on? Just deal with it. My dad always used to say to me, actually, a concerning number of times throughout. <laughs> Adam, my that's a little dick. <laughs> that's what he used <laughs> no, to say. He, <laughs> no, he could have said that a couple of times. He said, uh, "Son, it's not what." I think it was one time my mum was just for some reason. I, 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 she probably shouldn't have been doing this in front of kids, but like took the piss out of him for having a small willy, and he just kind of turned to me and went, "Son, it's not how big it is." what you do with it and i was like cheers dad yes, i don't really want to imagine that that explains thanks. that uh, guy I know armory of like, dildos in uh, adam's house <laughs> a guy i know had like one leg slightly shorter than the other and he had some sort of surgery done to basically match them that makes sense though because i feel like that would have implications <laughs> for your gait you know like you might walk not yeah. optimally if you yeah yeah but like i, I don't know i'm not really in a cosmetics it's lynn said to me the other day she's like i want to have something done to my forehead and i'm like just get a grip <laughs> What, yeah, like what? Get a hold of yourself. I don't know if she's got like, like, a, like everyone has like, a, I don't know if you can see them. But like, you know, oh, like a line? Yeah, yeah. It's like a Botox like She's just getting old or something, you know, getting older. So everyone gets those lines. Oh, I want something to do. I'm like, come on now. I mean, it's your body. Do with it what you want. <laughs> yeah. But I'm certainly not paying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So I, I'm not really one for cosmetic surgery. Unless it's uh, corrective. Like you, yeah. If you were horribly burned or something. Uh, which we'll get onto that we'll get later on in this, yeah. <laughs> this podcast. Um, I'm going to France tomorrow, boys. Going on my jollies. A wee wee. Wee wee. I'm going to drink beer, eat croissants, frog's legs. Croissants. Croissants. What's the purpose of the trip? Business or pleasure? Pleasure this week. Business next week when I go to Prague. Yeah. This is, there's a lot of uh, traveling going on, actually. By the time this next podcast goes out... Uh, that'll be the week that I'm going to Prague to watch people punch each other in the head for two nights in an open air stadium. How cool is that? That's if anybody's in Very Prague, cool. go watch the fights. Come say hello. Moderately cool, yeah. Um, Give it a seven out of ten on the cool scale. But France this week, there's a, a massive heat wave going across Europe. I'm told. Yeah, apparently like it's it. going to peak in Sardinia at 45 degrees. Allegedly, I've just read that this morning. Could be complete bullshit, but i'll let you know how hot it is but i'm actually we're going to watch the uh the tour de france passes through the little village where we're going so we get to watch that which i thought had been boring as fuck but i uh i've been watching that documentary on netflix have you seen it advertised it's from the guys who made drive to survive yeah, yes no 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 it's pretty exciting probably yeah. not going to watch that i mean it's been going on for the last two weeks and i've watched any of it the documentary thing Tour, Tour de france i don't know Tour de france documentary not just not just a clever name unchained <laughs> it's called unchained, unchained. i think that's a clever name. You get it? Bike, chain, push bike. bike no, yeah, I, get, I get it, I get it. Chain I'm, on I'm a not, bike. I'll be honest. Not Them really boys are monsters, man. They're doing like 200 kilometer rides a day up, up mountains. I didn't realize how... Uh, They're still all diving in those uh, uh, oxygen chambers. No, nah, I think the old... Doping, Band now. The, yeah, I mean, they'll be like, oh, we don't do it anymore. Of course they do. They all train at altitude in their off season, getting the gains. How could you possibly cycle 200 kilometers every day or every two days? Don't know. I don't. I don't, I don't fall cycling, man. But it's needless to say, it's impressive. Let's not. Uh, let's not go down the. All athletes are drug cheats. I don't believe that. So uh, yeah, if you're a cyclist, <laughs> especially those well athletic uh, competitive eaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there were a way to drug cheat, I probably would do it. <laughs> what well, um, you're off to Finland, right? Yeah. If all goes to plan, Finland. How long are you going for? Oh, only like a week. What What's the uh, and a bit the dishes that it's known for in Finland? I don't know if they're really known for anything. Oh. Uh, inevitably, the food challenges will all be... Um, Burgers. <laughs> American, <laughs> probably. Breakfast. Or like an emulation. No, I've, I've, I've picked out a few. Because the reason I'm going there, people will be like, what the fuck, why Finland? Which is a valid question. But there actually are uh, a decent amount of food challenges there. There are at least like nine. Um, and I've picked out the ones, ideally, uh, if I can do them, that are not burgers right so yeah. some things that are a bit different uh, but i don't know what their kind of national cuisine is um google that george national cuisine of finland come on mate i feel like they're, they're, they're right next to sweden right so they i get the feeling when the videos go out in <laughs> five months time people will be like oh do surströming you know like fermented fish it's really oh, stinky yeah. and apparently hard to eat but i'll be safe by then because I'll, I'll have been home like half a year because <laughs> you'll be retired by then there's no <laughs> way i can pronounce that kajalan pirakat no idea what that is. Sounds delicious. Yeah. Which is? <laughs> it's a type of pasty. Ooh. Karelian pasty. Have to try one. Ooh. Nice. Anyway, yeah, that's, I am going there for, for a week. Just, I, I feel like I need, people are always asking me, you know, why always North America? Yeah. And we've been over those reasons, I think, before. But yeah. um, I think if we're going to take this show on the road, it's, it's supposed to be a journey of uh, global conquest, isn't it? But like Alexander the Great, but 
<laughs> Still in the Philippines, <laughs> <laughs> what a reference. <laughs> um, so, like, I think I, any European countries that have at least a moderate number of eating challenges, I, I, I'm going to try my best, especially next year, next year to visit. You're eating, you're eating, you're eating, yeah, you're eating your mate. You're meeting your mate, the, uh, <laughs> I think I'm eating. The Finland's Thor. Depends on what steam it gets. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, meeting up with a friend of mine called Jesse. Yeah, Jesse Pinnan, who's like a, uh, he makes YouTube videos, but he's like a, he's a strong man, yeah, he competes in like a. Strong man, yeah. Finnish strongman events. And How tall is he? Like he's a fucking six, he's eight? Huge. Is he like a giant? That's he's a probably like, Viking. yeah, like three of me. <laughs> not, I don't even know he's going to get in the car because you know me I always get like a compact car oh, yeah, yeah. and I said I'd pick him up on like the first day and I, but I think part of that might be funny if I'm filming it yeah. like watching a seven seven foot two guy who's like but even like um, kilos getting the car Randy getting in the Tesla he made that look like it were a smart car he's, he's bigger than he, Randy R- <laughs> bigger than Randy R- <laughs> he's bigger than Randy <laughs> um, uh, but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm looking uh Looking forward to it because Finland pretty much like nine months of the year it's just snow, so he's been asking me to visit him for a while, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I'll come when it's when it's warm. not snow because I, I can't deal with extreme cold. <laughs> I feel like I'm dying, you know. But uh, yeah. we had actually watching that Canada video of the day, uh, <laughs> the one in Edmonton, fur? Fur? yeah, for the fur challenge, and you were like, it's freezing, and I'm like, this is fucking odd. This <laughs> <laughs> the, weird thing, the weird thing about that is that everyone's like, right, are you still in Edmonton? Half the people are like, yeah, why, why are you lying about the temperature? I'm like, <laughs> what reason would have to lie about it? The, the more logical assumption is that I just shot it a while ago. Yeah. And then a, a lot of people are like, are you still in Edmonton? And I'm like, well, on the drone shot, there's snow on the floor. So you, you must know, right, that it was <laughs> filmed a while back because it's like 35 degrees an hour or something. Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not I'm not in Canada anymore. That was quite some time ago. <laughs> in fact, the funniest thing now is that like I've done, that tr- the videos from that trip have just started. And not only have I, did, have I been back from that trip, I've also been back from this another trip for like yeah. two weeks now. So I need to kind of chill and uh You can't chill. You said you got back from that last one, spent two days at home and then told Mrs. Beard, I need to get out of here. I've got to go. And she's like, What? Yeah, with that, but that was just that, that was kind of circumstance. But what I mean is that like it's hard. I'm gonna have to do a couple more of the I've got some ideas for the next ones, next couple that we're gonna do together. Can we talk about it? Can we say? Can we say? Well no, because I don't wanna I don't wanna, don't wanna ruin it. But like it. if I do those, it's a little bit easier. Cause like when I go to restaurants now and they'll be like, When's the video going up? And I'm like, Yeah, about four months. <laughs> like, <"What?" laughs> uh, I, I filmed this one uh, at the weekend actually. And uh, some people, I guess a lot of people, it was in Newton A Aycliffe. Just kind of like uh, near, near Middlesbrough. Right. But anyway, uh, a lot of people came down because they posted it on Facebook when I was there. They posted the picture. Ah, and yeah. People were rushing down to get pictures and whatnot, That's which, which was that. nice. It was nice though. Um, and uh, But then the people were like, when's the video going up? Like, <laughs> four months. Like, what? Four months? <laughs> yeah, I mean, unless I just put it up now for no reason. But anyway. Is it looking, uh, this, have you reached out to those ones that we mentioned uh, that we can crew up for again? No, ah. but I will. Don't worry. Because I nice suggest like start of August ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll figure it out, man. I've had stuff to di- stuff to do, you know. Um. <laughs> stuff, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> in the chat, of the, oh, what did you say? In the chat of the night when Mike piped up and he ran about having a wank once every every full moon. <laughs> every full moon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike, Mike said, <laughs> Mike said, what's your daily routine? So I put how my, my very boring daily routine up. He's like, what about all the wanks? I was like, at my age, I probably wank every full moon, mate. If I'm lucky. <laughs> In that, oh, right. You put, you put wake up, shit, drink coffee, ed- <laughs> edit, walk, <laughs> breathe, <laughs> eat, edit, lift weights, watch films with cocks in them, sleep. Uh, and then Mike put a wank in between each, but only wank on a full moon. <laughs> if I wanked in between each, does it be like uh, it'd be like fucking talcum powder coming out, but <laughs> just like a puff of air? Have we spoke about this on the podcast before? Have you, have you seen, because oh, I put it in the last episode, but we didn't actually talk about it. It's like oh. what the world record is for the most oh, amount man. of wanks in a day. Come That's, on. I think you did. Google but... it. I'm, it's, smart. it's like a mad number. I, I think <laughs> it's like, <laughs> who, is, <laughs> <laughs> who is officiating that? Was somebody like sat there watching the bloke? I don't know. I mean, I suppose if you've seen him wank himself off once, you can watch it 36 more times. Imagine what it'd be like at the end. He'd be like, ah. It'd be red raw, wouldn't it? It'd be like when David Goggins did his pull-up challenge <laughs> for 24 hours, his hands, oh. all the skin's ripped off his hands. How many? Uh, apparently it's 83 times in 24 hours. Oh, that makes me more thrilled. Do the maths. 80, 83 divided by 24. Oof. You are disconcertingly interested in this. Yeah, but it's fascinating. I, I, just want to move <laughs> on. I, I would recommend you not even just try this because one more guy has died in attempt to overtake this record <laughs> after ejaculating 42 times. 
Jesus. But, well, that, well, that kind well, of leads us kind of neatly onto yeah, the topic. But that means he's having 3.45 wanks an hour. If he doesn't sleep, which I might <laughs> if he doesn't sleep. So it's like one every quarter of an hour. So it's like, we'd have to have four in this podcast. How did the guy... <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a go. <laughs> How did the guy die? Well, I don't know. Just surely that's not good for you. <laughs> Heart rate, probably. Had a heart attack. It's just like, can't, it, can't, it can't be caused death, surely. Well, <laughs> anyway. Well, on that topic. Yeah, I mean, we asked uh, that, 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 what That's almost like a plan, wasn't it? <laughs> um, we asked Adam to come up with an idea um, for a podcast, and he said, how many times a day can you wank into it before you think falls off? No, he said, what's the worst ways to die? Yeah. And uh, we, I said, actually, that's quite a good idea. So then we, did, we decided to do a bit of research and uh, find out what actually are the worst ways to die. So... We're here to cheer you up today. I've actually got some funny, funny deaths. Yeah. Things. Well, not that death is ever really funny, but like at the end, we've got some kind of humorous ways. Maybe I'd like to die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we're going to break this down. Um, I don't know. That, that's your. I just come up with. I'm just the ideas guy. I'm the ideas guy, and then you kind of condense it into a more uh, prof- <laughs> professional end product. Well, I am. Um, I asked one of one of my family members. In fact, quite a few of them work in the NHS in 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 high up. Well, in, in the very serious parts. And I said, what is the worst ways to die? So I got, I got the so actual- you got it from the horse's I mouth. I literally got it from the horse's mouth. Um, and one of the top ones that, um, oh, it's my sister. My sister said, so she went- <laughs> Does that mean I just called your sister a horse? Sorry. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> What's her name again? I met her at Christmas. My sister, Laura. Laura, Laura, I'm sorry. I'm sure she absolutely doesn't listen, but- um. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently one of the worst ways is a flesh eating bug uh, by the name of necrotizing fasciitis. Maybe you can put a picture on screen. Should oh, we do that? The, <laughs> you're going to get us demonetized. Yeah. Maybe we, we don't make do any that. money as it is. So Should we Google not? that? Should we go quickly? Go- <laughs> I well, see. Is that like, uh, what was it called? Necrotizing fasciitis. So fascia, fascia, fascia. Necrotizing. Is, I guess your skin. And obviously ne- necrotic from uh, uh, the Greek. Necrotizing Necro. uh, for death. Yeah, that's pretty grim. I don't want to see him, man. I don't, I don't really want. Do you ever to... used to back? Oh, every single one's like you've got to unlock it to see it. Do you ever used to tell people to Google blue waffle back in the day? Do you remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't Google it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that, and uh, I'm not gonna Google it. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna let me. View- Whoa! Look at that. <sighs> Heavy that. It well, looks bad, but it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I, and I don't want to see any more before you before you start going through them. Uh, but yeah, that's, that sounds like it'd be pretty bad. I'm not sure it would be the, the oh, very me. worst. That's horrible, that. Somebody's hoof. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? There's something wrong with him, man. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel like you probably, you, I mean, if they're health professionals, they're probably right in saying that it's one of the worst ways to go. But I feel like they could pre- prescribe pain medication. Whereas in some of the cases that I've read about, uh, they would be much more painful, I imagine, than that. Well, so, should, we do like, should we do like one each? I don't to go through my I've list. I've just got like, I, 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 you go through your list because I just had a, a ballpark idea of what I think are the worst ways to go. Okay. I, w- I was chatting with her about it yesterday and um, I did mention the, the would it have, well, it doesn't really matter, a lady or a man that went into the <laughs> the CT MRI machine with a butt plug in. Oh, we talked about it uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. They went in with a, a, a and it, uh, I mean, that's pretty bad, but like, I, there are probably worse ways. I always think, what do you think is the worst way to go? Like, if you, if somebody said to you, what's the wor- what's the one way you don't want to die? I, I know top of my head exactly what that would be. The Same. worst possible way. Honestly, for me, it'd be like some sort of long-term illness. You know, like... I'd be wo- the worst out. way. Yeah, because like, remember, slow. if you have a long-term illness, they can give you palliative care, which ah, obviously right, does not yeah. make it a good... I don't, I, don't get me wrong, All I right, don't well, want to go that so way. So, like, but. I think probably the worst way is burned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. same. So, my top... That, that was my next on my list, is, like, being burned to death, because... Um, Travis Barker jumped uh, out of a fucking plane, didn't he? Remember? Well, he didn't just jump out of a plane. Well, a plane crashed, crashed and it? then he, 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 had, he was covered in jet fuel, jumped yeah. out, set on fire. Burned yeah, all yeah. his, ta- like, loads of his tattoos off. So. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's got to be the worst, right? I, I was thinking more, like, burned at the stake, you know, like, Joan of Arc style burned, because, oh, like, right, yeah. I feel like if you cannot move, it's going to make it infinitely worse. And I don't know if they... Because they burn you from the the bottom up, right, and it being burned at the stake, so... I feel like you're going to experience a lot of pain before you pass out from the pain or loss of kind of uh, fluid you know, from, your, from your legs and whatnot, you know? Yeah. So I'd I feel have, like I don't want that. I'd have said the worst way that I would hate to die is, you know, when you see people crawling around in caves, like really tight spaces oh, and they yeah, get yeah. stuck. Oh, yeah. 
that's a bad way to go. But you see them videos on Instagram now, like where people are going, yeah. they're like, oh, I'm stuck. Yeah. Spelunking. Sp- Sorry? Spelunking, when they go cave diving. Spelunking. Spelunking. Why do everything, bring, bring everything back to spunk? Yeah, you, you might need to do a bit of spelunking to get some lubricant to squeeze your elf, yourself back out. Yeah, I had, have you ever seen that movie, The Descent? It's kind of a supernatural movie, but it starts when they're kind of ca- uh, cave, caving, cave diving. No. You've not seen that? It's a great film, like a fairly low budget British horror movie. <laughs> no. Oh, it's fantastic. You should watch it. Uh, I won't. But it starts, it's, I know you won't. It starts <laughs> off, there's no cars in it, or like people jumping between the Burj Khalifa, and, <laughs> like souped up nitrous oxide mega cars or whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah, but I, I would hate, I'm, I'm not like mega claustrophobic, like I can get in lifts and stuff, but like I, the idea of being oh, trapped somewhere with my arms like that, because yeah. there's a part in that film when she gets stuck, they get her out, but. Uh, yeah, I feel like I don't. I don't know why anyone would ever do that for pleasure. I can't. I can't discern the pleasure in that from anyone. I, like I get why people skydive for the thrill, and, yeah, yeah, and do all kinds of things. But like going in caves, man. I watched a, a YouTube video recently. So you could probably find. It. I don't know what the channel was, but it's, it's like it is actually a channel about explaining people's like I mean accidents or like injuries. And um, I think it was it was in the Caribbean and an oil. There must be like a. Um, but wherever they drill for oil, they basically put these pipes underwater. So imagine a 90 degree pipe, right? Uh, what what they'll do is like off the seabed, maybe like 20 foot off the seabed. Obviously the, the pipe will go on the seabed and it'll come up by like 20 foot. And there'll be like a bell that you can, that'll have like hold air into it. So divers have got to go down. They can go into the bell and they can take all the gear off. And that's where they connect up, um, they can connect up oil pipes and stuff. But when the pipe's not it being used, they've put like a, an inflatable balloon inside the pipe. So what happened? What apparently, like three divers went down. Somebody cracked this uh, this bell, but there was a, a like a negative pressure inside the pipe, and it sucked all three divers down into this pipe onto the seabed. Uh. So um, so th- I think three divers went in. But the last man still had his uh, sort of mask on, but it ripped, ripped it off as he went down. And they all like, obviously if it naturally went onto the seabed, they got to a point in the pipe where there was air in the pipe. So imagine being, I don't know, fucking 100 foot below the seabed in a pipe, which is like this wide. So the, it, it was that, that narrow that they couldn't, they, were, they didn't have the um, air tanks on the back anymore. They were just laid there. So the last man had to try and like the claw, you know, crawl the way back out. Long story short, one that guy was pretty long. Yeah. That's, this is a long, long story fucking medium, this not Come on. <laughs> it's like, I thought I was, fa- I was like, this is fucking fascinating. So the last guy managed to like crawl his way back and he felt an air tank. But at that point, the water had, had obviously filled up the pipe at that point. So he put his air, his air tank up on and crawled and managed to get back out the pipe, got to the surface and said, this has happened. There's still two people st- still stuck in this pipe. They deemed it that unsafe to rescue them. So they just left him there to die. So for three days, they could hear him knocking on this pipe on oh. seabed. Left them to die. They left them to die. They said, like, we can't get them out. How that's, fucking nuts is that? Well, you'd never catch me doing a job like that for a living, but yeah. So I'd say that's a pretty bad way to die. He's like drowning or horrendous. suffocation on a pipe on the seabed that you ah, shouldn't have been in. Yeah, but I mean, like, this, on the flip side of worse ways to go, uh, do you ever watch that documentary? You probably didn't shoot him in mega young because it was like 10 years or more ago. Michael Portillo, for some reason, like, presented it. Uh, but it was t- trying to figure out the most humane way, uh, you know, to carry out the death penalty. Yeah, different topic, but they basically found out that the probably the the best way to go is hypoxia, you know, so to take oxygen slowly out of the atmosphere, yeah. or, it, or it being replaced by carbon dioxide, or whatever, and you just go really sleepy, and then you you know you you, you die. So I suppose it, it would be the psychological torment that would be bad, but there'd be no acute pain, would there? I wonder so if that's how they do. That. Um, it's like it's Switzerland where you can go to have. Oh, they just give you like loads of meds. You oh, probably right. want to be uh, careful there as well because you can get. Um, in trouble for talking about that, can you? I don't know what's it, what's it called. Should we not say the word? But there's a name for it in there. You could probably say the name of the cl- the clinic. The, well, the process. What's the process called? Oh, euthanasia. Euthanasia. That's from that. There's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, so I hope it help. Uh, oh yeah, next on the list then. In fact, drowning was on my list. Um, oh, I've got another one. Listening to garlic bread by Beard Meat <laughs> Food on repeat till you die. That was also on my list. Legend has it that if you listen to that seven times in a row, you die. There's like a hidden, I can confirm. Like message in it. I can confirm that that's not true. <laughs> Having edited it. Well, come on, tell us your list then. Uh, well, I don't really have a, I didn't uh, think it was going to be a list, but I thought we were just going to have a general discussion about uh, bad ways to 
snuff it. But, you know what um, you said about films, sorry? What about that? What's that film where he falls into like a cave and then the rock traps his arm and he has to cut his arm? hours. Yeah, that's a fucking bad day. That was, that was a true story, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Uh, the, the dude that played him was James Franco, right? In the film. I've yeah. not seen the film, but yeah, he had to cut his arm off. There with a leather. You, you think you could do that? I don't know, man. I don't know if I think I'm one of those guys. You know what I'm like? I'm just be like, right, fuck, I'm done for. <laughs> you, you'd be like, yeah, other Get one it. arm's trapped, other ones is like, is like, is it both a Pedro? It's like, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't be like that, but I don't know if I'd have one. Just that smashes his head on rock to speed it up. I can't think of. Uh, maybe I could do it. I don't know. I don't know, but like, I wouldn't want to. In the it. film, you like, you know it off you. Yeah, <laughs> you get peckish. <laughs> in the film, he like breaks his arm and then he has to like, just start hashing away at it. Yeah, because that's what you would do. Is like, you wouldn't like try and you'd have to break it because otherwise you're gonna have to go through the bone, which is gonna be nigh on impossible to cut through. Oh yeah, I mean, I imagine how blunt your leatherman's gonna be. Just have to go through your skin. Yeah, I just, it doesn't really bear thinking about, does it? <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I actually went a little bit more. Uh, I went into the the annals of history. Um, to uh, to determine what I think what there were many uh, up for discussion, but the worst way to go I think is a a, a punishment a, t- a type of uh, corporal punishment called scaphism, which is a, a apparently I think it was a Persian thing, uh, a Persian type of punishment, uh, and uh, it was also known as the boats. Right, so they would do this. Who's going to carry the boats? That's what Goggins says, isn't it? And the, no, never mind, I don't know. I'm not a big fan. You a big fan of David Goggins? Or I think I've read his book. I inherently don't trust anyone that shouts everything they say and wakes up at four in the morning. Who's like, going to carry the boats and the logs? I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying his. Uh, I'm not buying his daily routine. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. So it's also known as the boats. It's uh, a, an ancient Persian method of execution mentioned by Plutarch in his Life of An Artaxerxes. Uh, it ostensibly entailed trapping the victim between two boats. Right, so two like long boats, like canoes, yeah. feeding and covering them with milk and honey and allowing them to fester on like a, you know, like a fetid, horrible lake, you know, like a stagnant lake. And they'd be devoured by insects and vermin on the lake over time. So they trap you between two boats, yeah. cover you in milk and honey. That part would be quite nice, especially if they're feeding it to you. I love honey. But then because, you know, you've got like, you just, I guess the milk and the honey, you start to fester and the insects eat away at you. I thought that, that sounded pretty bad. That or the way that the guy goes in uh, Bone Tomahawk, you know, when they turn him upside down and saw him from bottom to top. I feel like that'd be pretty bad, bad. I thought you were going to say they tied him to the two boats and they just sailed away and pulled him apart. <laughs> they'd have to be like hung, speed- drawn and quartered. What, in ancient yeah. Persia? They'd have to be fucking speedboats to do that, yeah, wouldn't they? Probably. Sailboats, you'd be like, yeah, holding it together. In the same, <laughs> it's not exactly, that, that's a grim way to go, but I think mentally... Just falling overboard on a ship would be horrendous. Like watching that thing, and we mentioned it before on the podcast, but like that, just seeing it sail away into the distance and you're just bobbing away at sea, that would be. Or, or like a plane crash in the middle of the ocean and you survive somehow and you know you're just stuck and there's absolutely nowhere. That's the, that's the, the you, that you basically, that's the movie Castaway. Yeah. And or he goes lost back at the, the end TV of his, show, lost. His, his wife's moved on. Ah, she? yeah, that's heavy. That. It's a great film, that Castaway. So it's basically a film with one man in it. Yeah. So it's a good, uh, it's good, yeah, he has Wilson, a little, uh, little, uh, ball, volleyball for, for company. I can think of worse. <laughs> he doesn't die, does he, in the end? So just chilling a little. I don't, I wouldn't have the skill though to, uh, to survive on an island like that. I think we just established that when I said I just drink coconut water, then you told me that actually that'll kill you after some time. Can you check that? Did we fact check that? I we think we, we did. did. We yeah. did, yeah, and you can't, you can't. You can't, apparently. can you? No, I remember that. I remember because it's, it's very rare. That I'm actually ever wrong. So when I was wrong about that, <laughs> I committed it to memory. But yeah, that, those two, I think, are extraordinarily bad ways, I think, to go. Yeah. So like, I mean, being burned alive, I think, has to be. It always reminds me of that scene from Game of Thrones, you know, where that dude burns his daughter. That was horrible, that, if you ever watched it. But it. Um, that's oh, got to be the worst way. What about that one where uh, the guy with Targaryen, he gets like molten gold poured over his head yeah i actually when i was reading about uh so i was trying to research some funny deaths just to lighten the mood which we'll get onto in a second but uh apparently somebody uh was once uh, that happened to somebody once and they poured molten gold down his throat which i thought was a, a, a bit of a waste of gold really but there's still. a scene in peaky blinders where he pours like hot tar on this guy yeah it's grim those mm. all sound i mean th- those all sound like bad ways to go to be uh, fair Weirdly on this, you came up with this topic, but I actually follow a Twitter page called uh, Morbid Knowledge, which has got some savage ones on. Like I, 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 that was 10 o'clock last night, I'm in bed, like scrolling through Morbid Knowledge before I'm about to fall asleep. But this, so luckily this person didn't die. 
Uh, but oh, that's, that's good. That's but good this thing. sounded pretty fucking grim, so I put it in the chat to George. Uh, in February 2018, Kaylee Muthat ripped out her own eyes um, and squished them with her hands during a meth-induced psychotic episode. That can't be real. Is that real? Muthat had been awake for almost 48 hours, snorting and inject- injecting a concoction of tainted methamphetamine. Meth- methamphetamine. <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't laugh, but that's really <laughs> terrible. Like, is that real? That's real, mate. There's pictures of, not the eyes, but like, imagine hoying them out. The, the, I, I put it in because when it said squished them. <laughs> that's like that scene from Kill Bill, right? When she stands on her uh, one good eye and squishes it between her toes. Uh, that's one of those scenes yeah. in movie history where you just kind of like, squirm. It's funny because... Um, I, not the ones without penises in it getting set on fire. <laughs> yeah, they, they tend to be forgotten in the in, in kind of the great filmmaking moments <laughs> from history, the dick scenes. Uh, apart from that one with uh, Willem Dafoe and Antichrist, a lot of people talk about that because this is real dick. Anyway. Oh, um, you know who else has got the dick out in a film? Bronson. Um, Tom Hardy and Bronson. Yeah. I mean, if I was being paid what they get paid, I'd whip it out like... If you paid me enough, I'd probably whip out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to get a macro lens on it, though, from about, <laughs> from about that close. <laughs> Take, just, take the highest bidder in the comments. It'd just be like a little mushroom coming out of this 80s bush, wouldn't it? It's like, <laughs> yeah. And what of it? Uh, anyway, are we, are we, is there any structure to this? Fucking hell, we just talk about I, people I've, squishing I've eyeballs. Got, I've got a couple of um, stories that I found online that are true. <laughs> yeah. um, one is called The Nutty Putty Cave Incident. So west of Utah Lake, there is a cave with the name of Nutty Putty. The cave was named after the vicious clay on its walls, which oozed and felt like a little like silly putty when it was pushed. Uh, People, including scouts, liked to explore the cave with its narrow passages, and this led to several rescues. There were concerns about the cave before John Edward Jones uh, and his brother Josh visited it in November 2009. The two were looking for one of the narrow passages in the cave system known as the birth canal, uh, which it was possible for people to squeeze through. Unfortunately, the two got lost and found themselves in an unmapped part of the cave, John spotted an opening angled 70 degrees downwards and began to crawl inside. He believed he had seen an opening on the other side, but he was incorrect. And as he wormed his way inch by inch, he became wedged in there with no way of getting himself back out the way he came. He tried to keep going forwards, breathing out to try to make his chest fit in the narrow gap. But as he breathed in again, he became trapped for good. For the next day, rescuers tried to retrieve him as he lay face down in the passage. So he was upside down. (laughs) The position he was in put great strain on his heart to pump blood out of the brain, which is usually assisted by gravity. Rescuers tried to get him out using a pulley system, but eventually it came loose and failed. After 27 hours, John died due to cardiac arrest. A week after his death, the caves were sealed for good with John still inside, where he remains to this day. You know what? This podcast, even though sometimes I get irritated about it when you start talking about dicks and bodily fluids, normally it makes me feel like quite happy. (laughs) But this is really depressing me today. So we're just talking about people dying in really bad circumstances. I, your I, fucking I, idea. I know it's my idea, but I didn't really, really think it through, man. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, that's real. That's a it bad way to go. It's What happened to Josh? Uh, I think they might have saved him. Right. It doesn't say, but... That's nuts, that. For the record, if it's ever like a 50-50 between me and this Josh, I, you know, I can pay you a little bit better if you get me out. That's what I'm just saying. <laughs> if I get stuck, he will pay you to get me out. <laughs> man, this man's got dough. I, think I will. <laughs> That's mad, that. They, them, them sorts of, I don't know why these people, like, I understand that we've got to explore <laughs> the world, but I don't know that why anybody would do that. No, yeah, but what I mean. What are you going to find in there, though? Hidden treasure. Uh, that, that monster Online, from Lord of the Rings, the, the Balrog of, uh, of Moria. Yeah. I say that because uh, Lindsay got it into her head last night that we were going to watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy start to finish again. Wait, one night. night. No, get the fuck out, man. Get the fuck out of town. Uh, no, just, you know, uh, chronologically one after the next. They are great films, to be fair. Never I, seen them. What? Never seen Lord of the Rings. You've never seen Lord of the Rings. Nah. If there was coffee in there now, yeah. I'd throw it on you. Have you seen The Hobbit? No. Nah. None of them. No. Nah. How None have you not God. seen Lord of the Rings? I'm just not into that sort of stuff. What, like good you films? You don't have to be into Lord of the Rings to have seen it. Everybody's seen Lord of the Rings, surely. One of Lindsay's friends once came to stay at our house, right? Which I, I inherently dislike when people come, even like family members. Because <laughs> you and walk around naked. No, no, we, I was fully, I was fully clothed, right? But she, we, they were talking about fun. stuff. <laughs> and I was just trying to like mind my own business and whatnot. But I couldn't help it when she said that Lindsay was talking about Rocky and her friend went like, I've never seen Rocky. And I just like instantly was forced to engage in the conversation. I was like, you've never seen Rocky? She said, no. I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> 
not even the creeds. She's like, no, I've never seen them. I'm like, how? I don't understand how you've got to like 30 years old and never seen the Rocky, one of the Rocky films. It's the same with Lord of the Rings. Like, I'm just not into it, mate. What do you mean you're not into it? I'm if you've not into seen like, it, you can't, but you can't not be into it if you've what, not what seen it. What do you call it? it? It's like fantasy. Fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just not into that. I'm just not into like Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and, and Dragons. And it's, oh my God. I'm just not into it, mate. Talking be turning in his grave, mate. All right, cool. Who would be? The guy that wrote the fucking box. Who? <laughs> 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 <Ooh>, Ronnie Pickering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get one down. I'm just gonna get a different course and put, just put, get your face printed into a mask and stick it on him. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. That the number of films you have not seen is like <laughs> so concerning to me. Shall I give you another? I, one? I only watch documentaries. I literally only watch documentaries. That's it. I don't watch films. <laughs> Shall I give you another? <laughs> yes. Go yeah. on, George. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Okay. In 1889, Octavia Smith married a wealthy Kentuckian named James Hatcher. The newlyweds had a son who they named Jacob. However, infant mortality rates being what they were in the late 1800s, Jacob sadly died in infancy, losing her son put Octavia in a deep depression and she was bedridden for several months. During this time, she also began showing signs of a mysterious illness. Eventually, her body entered a coma-like state and nobody could awaken her. She was pronounced dead in May of 1891, just four months after Jacob's death. It was an unusually hot May that year and so Octavia was buried quickly uh, and embalming was not yet common practice. But a few days later, others in the town started to fall ill in the same circumstance with a coma-like sleep with shallow breathing patterns but only to awaken a few days later they discovered it was an illness caused by the bite of the mm, tetse fly tetse fly or something like that fearing that she had been buried alive james panicked and had octavia exhumed thinking she might awaken she had but james was too late octavia's coffin was airtight he found the coffin lining had been shredded and Octavia's fingernails were bloody. On her face was frozen a contorted shriek of terror. Whoa. That was a good story, George. Just for people that you can actually on YouTube, you can speed things up to double time. So I would recommend next time George talks, you do that. But no, that's a good, that's a good one, that George. Yeah, yeah, we don't use filler words on this podcast. <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a good one, yeah, yeah. That's savage. It reminds that. me of that movie, Arachnophobia, although they all just die in that. I've like, seen that film where... Like, Bill, she gets buried alive, doesn't she? Is it Kill Bill? There's a film where... Yeah, yeah. There's a film where... Punches the way out. Yeah. <laughs> One inch punch, Bruce Lee. There's a film where that guy gets buried alive, isn't there? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, have you seen yeah. that film, yeah? It's called, uh, what was it now? Buried. <laughs> 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 you fucking tit. Are we, are we moving on to like some humorous ones or have you got more? Yeah, we'll move on to some humorous no, ones. No, no, well, like. well, like after he's just give you shit. Yeah, look. There's the next story. Read that story. Let's see if you can do it any quicker and better well, than George. Why did you pick a story that big? Is this one I, is this one I read? I think that, yeah, yeah, I think it's I think right. it's good, mate. I think pick, I, I, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, like, pick out spots here. 24-year-old David Allen Kerwin, California, driving through Yellowstone about 1 p.m., parked the truck to get out, take a close look at the hot springs. Uh, somebody escaped. Uh, his dog. Uh, his dog escaped. Fucking missing key points, in, yeah. Began yelping. Uh, the Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, you're, you're fired. missing important details here. Right, go on, George, do it properly. This is fascinating shit, this. So they drove out to a... It's better than fucking Lord of the Rings. <laughs> they drove out to a hot springs and the dog ran out, of the, ran out of the truck and jumped in the pool just thinking it was just normal water. Um, and it's actually over 200 degrees. Jumped in and began yelping. Um, the two rushed over to the pool to aid the terrified dog. Uh, and one of them went in head first to go after the dog so fully immersed in the water and came out um of the boiling spring uh the dog <laughs> could not be kept alive the dog died anyway and he got some severe severe burns and died the dog on the man. hot spring i feel like i basically had that covered apart from saying 200 degrees which would have been about it <laughs> but um yeah no, that reminds me of scene you've seen dante's peak or am i asking the wrong person again yeah wrong dante's person. peak volcano movie Br pierce brosnan great film don't Linda think Hamilton. I've seen it. Well, there's a point in that where uh, he's a volcanologist, right? And there's a spring. These two, uh, two young uh, whippersnappers. They want to do a bit of skinny dipping, and uh, they uh, they go into the spring and they die, right? But uh, later in the film, uh, Pierce Brosnan's taking like Linda Hamilton's. I think she's like a son or daughter or whatever. They want to go jump in this pool, yep. and he grabs him at the last second because he smelt like sulfur in the air. And then these two corpses like rise to the top, and they've you know they've died and whatnot. 
But uh, in this, it says they tried to remove one of his shoes and his, all his skin on his foot came off with it. Ah, uh, yeah. We should put, probably put a disclaimer at the start of this one. It's been yeah. quite gory, hasn't it? We might it? do that. Yeah. Should yep. we have some uh, funnier ones? Yeah, some should we have some ones? funny ones? Lighten the mood. Of course, I should say, disclaimer, that there is nothing funny really about death, but uh, <laughs> there are some ways uh, in here that I would quite like to go. Uh, okay. Uh, so we're going to arrange it. I'm going to start with uh, this one, is, which I thought was really funny. Uh, some of these are from like antiquity, so they might have, uh, I'm not sure they're 100% true. You can never really confirm, can you? But uh, Zooks is a Greek painter died of laughter at his own portrait of the goddess Aphrodite because the elderly woman, woman who commissioned it had insisted on modelling for it. So she wanted to be the Aphrodite in the painting. <laughs> he fucking died laughing at like how bad it was. Uh, so I thought that was quite funny. I think you might die laughing at some offers that you get in your emails. <laughs> yeah. could, could happen, yeah. Um, this one I, I quite liked as well. Um, According to Valerius Maximus, uh, Achilles, the eldest of three great Athenian tragedians, was killed by a tortoise dropped by uh, an eagle. I had this one right You got that one? Yeah. Apparently the eagle had mistaken his bald head for a rock. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fucking head. clever, that, isn't it? Again, I, I think that could be one that sounds like a bit like it could be in a, you know, maybe it's not true. I, like I think that could be true, you know. You reckon? Yeah. Uh, again, this one is uh, another one, a, a guy that died of laughter. Uh, Chrysippus, a uh, third century BC Greek Stoic philosopher. Uh, he died after uh, he saw a donkey eating figs. He told the slave, he told a slave to give the donkey neat wine uh, and then uh, to, to wash the figs down and uh, having laughed too much, he died. Teach him for, <laughs> for laughing at a drunk donkey eating figs. <laughs> Uh, see if I can, I'll, I'll skip through the shitty ones. Um, I thought this one, this one was quite relevant to me. Uh, while visiting relatives, Henry the first of England uh, ate too many lampreys, which I had to Google. They're eels. Uh, against the, uh, his physician's advice, causing a pain in his gut and ultimately death, which I thought was kind of confusing because eels don't really seem like those things. Ooh, that's Moorish. I love that eel. Yeah. I'll have another, like twenty five eels. And the other weird thing I thought was that he's, he's actually consulted his physician, like, can I eat 30? <laughs> and he just went, nah. Like, it'd be like me going to my doctor and saying, can I eat, like, 30 Big Macs? Can you die from eating too many bananas? Or is that, like, a, a myth? You, in th like, technically you could, but you wouldn't be able to eat uh, most, not even something like me would be able to eat the number of bananas required to die from uh, potassium poisoning. Oh, uh, okay. Don't, don't take that as advice. I mean, don't try it. But uh, <clears throat> I've, uh, oftentimes I quite... Uh, if I've in the past, you know, I've eaten a lot of something, <coughs> I'll kind of Google the LD50 of, you know, so like, that's like a measure by which if you consume something, the rate at which 50% of people would die. Oh my so God. sugar is an interesting one. Yeah. So like the LD50 of sugar, for example. Um, so like if you're going to eat loads of Ben and Jerry's, I remember once Googling the LD50 of sugar thinking, am I going to die? And, you know, I've never died because of <laughs> no, no, so, yeah. so like that much table sugar would, you'd have to eat like, you'd have to basically have a bag of pure Lyle's fucking table yeah, sugar yeah, yeah. and eat like three bags of it or something, which is possible, but most people aren't going to do it and it would probably make them throw up. But anyway, by the by, uh, I thought that was quite funny. Well, not really that funny, but you know, meaningful. Uh, this is a good one. This is a real thing. The Airfoot latrine disaster occurred on the 26th of July, 1184, when Henry VI, the king of Germany, uh, held a, some kind of party. Uh, on the morning of the 26th of July, the combined weight of the assembled nobles at the party caused the wooden second story floor of the building to collapse and most of them fell through into the latrine cesspit, which was like poo, basically. Um, and uh, about 60 of them drowned in liquid excrement, which you could argue is a pretty bad way to go. That's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, oh, and this, this, I've got this one finally. Uh, actually, there are two more. Can I do two more? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is one that's good. Uh, Hans, I, I'd quite like to go this way, I think. I've got this one as well. Have you? I think. How do you know which one it is? Hans Steininger. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're on the same page, Judge. Do you want to say second. it? Hans Steininger from Austria was famous for two things. One, having the world's longest beard at four foot seven inches long, and two, for dying due to his beard. In 1567, <laughs> there was a fire in Hans Town, and from his haste, he forgot to roll up his beard. He accidentally stepped on his beard, lost his balance, stumbled and died after falling and breaking his neck. I reckon that's, I don't, depending on his age at the time of death, that's kind of worth it. I wish I had a beard that big. <laughs> he normally kept it wrapped up in a leather pouch, apparently. Seems like a bit of a waste. Mm. Why have it? Uh, the, the other one that I wanted to mention was I actually saw this recently on Twitter somewhere. 
Uh, Frank Hayes, 22, was a horse trainer. And because some jockey dropped out of a horse race, uh, he got... Um, <laughs> dropped out of a horse. <laughs> he literally dropped out of a horse. I know they're small, but you're not quite that small. Um, so you got the opportunity to race in a, in, in a race because he knew about horses, I guess. But he died of a heart attack midway through the race. Uh, and collapsed on the horse. It doesn't say this here, but I actually read it on Twitter. He, uh, the horse won the, the race by a head, and therefore he became the first and only person to ever posthumously win a horse race. <laughs> so he was dead, but he, w- he still won it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some facts. Cool part of history, that, isn't it? That is pretty cool. I've got a couple more as well, if you want to hear <clears throat> Yeah, go on, go. Edmund II died in 1016 AD when he was stabbed in the arse by a Viking <laughs> who hid in a pit where Edmund was doing his business. <laughs> oh, God. One of my mates, when I was at school, stay with me, he, uh, he didn't stab me in the arse, literally, but like, uh, I've still got the mark now. It's kind of like a, something over which we bond. But like, when I was at primary school, so I was about eight or something, I went to sit down, he put like a mega sharp pencil on my oh. seat and I sat on it, like on my, I think it's on my right book cheek, actually. And I've still got a dint in my ass now, I'd show it to you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he caused that. I know of someone, of another friendship group, where apparently they were doing like a chin-up challenge at a party and somebody got a broom handle. Oh, no. So as they, as they so came they down, it dropped on it and had to go and have an operation to have it removed. So are they I, doing a naked chin-up competition? No, but it must have penetrated the jeans that they were wearing. <laughs> And this is a th- this- come off it. Yeah, I'm not yeah, buying no, this. No, no, like there was witnesses. Because I said to my sister, "Don't like, lie to you." Episodes next week. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I said to my sister, "I'm like this is fucking ridiculous," and she was like, "You won't believe how many people turn up and end up in in hospital with something up their ass." And it's, as she said, "It's always because somebody was." Closing the curtains and fell. <laughs> like, yeah. So if, if, if you're going to get something stuck up your ass, that's the party line. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one more. One more death. Death by blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> that's put it in. Uh, Felix Faure Far was the president of France and died in 1899. In 1897, he met Marguerite Steinhill, who became his mistress. He died suddenly at the age of 58 from apoplexy on 16th of February while engaged in sexual activities with the then 30 year old Marguerite Steinhill. She started screaming and his hand became entangled with her hair. The president's secretaries, secretaries who knew what was going on ran into the office, cut off part of her hair to free her and smuggled her out through the rear exit. The whole incident was hushed up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the blowjob was the thing that killed him. <laughs> Probably a cardiac arrest. When you read through some of those, it's mad how many people died of weird, like, like things that, which today will be trivial. I read one about a guy that uh, it was conducting some kind of music thing and he used a staff to do it and he poked himself in the foot and died of sepsis. Oh, Another shit. guy that like tripped over, bit his tongue and he got gangrene in his tongue and died. Yeah. And things that now you look enough. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What's else but you'd be cool. But not back then. Mm. The way I go though, death by blozer. Uh, are we good? We're obviously running out of time. <laughs> um, how, how bad do you feel for Danielle? Sometimes I just think, what is she fucking putting up with, man? Uh, Give her um, a call, make sure she's all right after this, you know. Have we got a breaking beard? We have. Let's go. Breaking beard. Okay, who wants to go first? J- Josh, I went first last you're week, right, so Josh. Yeah, right. no, I'm like, yeah, I'm old man. I'm, you're okay. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm touching it after what you've just been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so these are death related. Trivia question. Yes. So what causes a death rattle? Is it fluid built up in the lungs, an erratic heartbeat, or the kidneys shutting down? What was the first one? Uh, fluid built up in the lungs. That one. It's true. A death rattle is a sound made by congestion in the lungs caused by a buildup of fluid. I feel like the others can't really make audible sound, can they? You know, you can hear somebody's heart, you know, the kidneys shutting down. They don't go like... Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> <laughs> Which of the following? He's on his deathbed. <laughs> uh, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Which come on, subscribe now. Sorry, carry on. Which of the following is not one of the top five causes of death in high income countries? Just imagine me on the fucking and all like the IV stuff. It's a screen face to black as the red screen comes up. His last words. His last words. Peace. Yeah. Where would what would the end credits scene be? Anyway, sorry, go on, George. Which of the following is not one of the top five causes of death 
in high income countries? Is it stroke, lung cancer, or HIV, AIDS? It's got to be HIV. It's true. That's a pretty easy one. True. Sort your life out, George. <laughs> Uh, okay, Josh, yeah. how long can the brain survive after the heart stops beating? Is it 30 seconds to a minute, three to seven minutes, or 10 minutes? I'll be there when your heart stops beating. Um, I'll be there when your last breath takes th- it uh, <laughs> What, like, sorry, how long does it survive? How long can the brain survive after the heart stops beating? Three to seven minutes. True. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I'd have probably guessed, guessed that. Okay, Adam. Do hair and fingernails continue to grow after yes. death? Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got that from Google, that's yes? No. He said no? Well, I remember, going, you know, Thackeray Medical Museum in Leeds? Yeah. That there was a thing there where they said it does keep growing, so I, I think you need to consult them. Wait, no, wait, wait. it only looks that way because skin shrivels up. Ah, that makes sense. That doesn't seem like an academically uh, accurate answer. I don't, I don't, I dispute like that. losing okay. here, kid. For, forever it's worth, I dispute that. Okay, last question, Josh. What is alga mortis? Is it the stage right before a person dies, stiffening of the body after death, or cooling of the body after death? The cooling. True. After the heart stops beating, the body immediately begins to turn cold, a phase known as alga mortis. How the fuck does it look like your your beard and your hair is still growing because your skin shrivels up? Still, Shut the fuck up, that's not. wrong. Don't, don't trash, trash this fucking studio. <laughs> All right, last one. How many people perished during the Black Death? Is it 25 million, 50 million, or 250 million? The middle one. 50 million? Yeah. No, it's 25 million. Yeah, 50 doesn't sound like a lot, doesn't it? Think about it. Yeah, it looks like uh, Adam's sliding down that scale closer to me, doesn't it? I yeah, I wonder if it could be something to do with the fact that I seem to every week get slightly harder questions than you, but, you know, I'm not saying it's rigged or anything. <laughs> I wouldn't say... <laughs> you you chose which week. way to go. <laughs> 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 you you could have gone first. Shut ah, the fuck up! Winner. Uh, have we got a, a fess hole to end this uh, We've this got bitch. one fess hole, yes. It's time for a fess hole. Coming from you. I only went to university to get laid. Three years in London and a student loan later and a grand total of six shags. What a disappointment. (laughs) Was it like a a cumulative thing? Because if you went there to get laid, then uh, if you've done it once and you've achieved the goal, right? Ah, true. Glass, look, he's normally a glass half empty sort of guy and he's glass half full with that one. Surprising after this episode. Yeah. Well, well, maybe it was the wording of it, but uh, yeah. I I lost this week, yeah, so... (laughs) You get what you you move one further away from the whatever the fourth it's going to be. Well, you you just move closer. You move closer to the. Oh, do I not that? come back one? No. Who oh. made these rules up? Me, because no one is doing the forfeit. <laughs> Wait, I've done a forfeit in how how long? Has what should the forfeit be? Even when we did a forfeit, he didn't do it. And I ended up doing it. Yeah, it cost it cost me hundred quid. I had to give some money to charity. Yeah, well, it was, it was well spent. Very well spent. I think I think objectively speaking, that was a a pretty good episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments. I'm going to give that for That's like a, what I call a banker when it comes to YouTube videos. It's yeah. kind of like a, it's a four out of 10. Didn't quite turn out like a banger, but uh, it's not the worst ever. I would argue. Well, if you what want to some... say is your favorite episode that we've done though. The we've done. I don't fucking remember a man. Uh, probably one with a guest. Yeah, true. Guest was uh, quite liked having, I liked when Mike Winnett was on. That was cool. Just because, you know, he's shorter than me. <laughs> I think Randy were good. I yeah. think Randy was, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one, yeah. Oh, Mrs. Beard. I think Mrs. Beard's a good one. No, that was one of my least favourite. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Sister Beard. That was a good one. I forgot that she was on it. Even on. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that even happened. She sent me, a, real quick, I've got to tell you this. She sent me a picture this morning. She was driving through Armley and she saw a guy at 9.30 in the morning drinking a Corona no judgment here, but he was uh, he was carrying a lizard on his arm. Nice. So he's giving his pet lizard a... Can you show something. me the picture? Yeah. Not so much a walk, because the lizard was not walking anywhere apart from up and down his arm, but uh, giving his lizard some fresh air, I guess. Honestly, I think you're rich enough to just pull that off now. Get yourself a lizard and just drink Corona. You can't really see it too well, because she's got like a Nokia 7750. Or <laughs> but like you can see the pint of, the bottle of... Well, it's, I don't even think it's Corona. Oh, yeah. And on, the, on his right arm, you can just about make out... Uh, some type of reptile. Yeah, that's some start today, yeah, is that? I'm going to die in a weird circumstance. I'm getting tied up around <laughs> this fucking... I just, that's the Tuesday morning you wanted it. 
I like it. Also, but you remember me telling you about my a friend of mine who was who was, who was beset by a uh, uh, horses. Remember me telling you about my, my friend that lives in Bradford. Who oh yeah. On it, and, like they they just walk by his house yeah. all the time now. Well, the horses. He sent us like three videos this morning of like horses walking by his house, just chilling. Like all where's different. the where's the owners? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they have owners. There's wild horses, perhaps. Certainly crazy horses. That's a, a Donny Osmond reference. Sorry, forgot you're not old. <laughs> Peace. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, see you. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>